All right, Lombardi. Let's just do, we we don't have to spend a million hours on this, but I'm going to give Go you ahead, nine do teams. You do. I'm going to give you nine teams mm-hmm. where I just looked at the win totals, and the win totals jumped out at me. Okay, one way or the okay. other, I was like, "Ooh, okay. that seems higher." Ooh, that seems too low. I had nine teams. I'll give you the. Go, no, you want the two low go. teams first, or do you want the two high teams? Whatever first? you want to do, mix it up. I don't care. All right, I'll do two high first. Where I just okay. first glimpse, I was like, "Ooh." Texans, six and a half. That seems high. Why are the Texans going to be good? I, What's I going am, on I, there? I, 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 to me, that one seems way too high. The only reason I think it's at six and a half is because of the uncertainty in Indianapolis. You know, is Tennessee going to be any good? Everybody thinks that Will Levis is going to play by week four or five. You know, I, I don't see it. I know Houston was in a lot of games, but if they play Stroud, I, I think it's going to be a problem. They'll have a hard time winning games. They're not good enough on defense to play – that D'Amico Ryan style of defense, which is a cover three, Seattle cover three, which unless you dominate the front, it's hard to really dominate defensively. So I would go under that. To me, I think that's, I think it's more of a five and a half number there. The only way you would say over is just because they don't have their first round pick and in football, for whatever reason, we don't protect picks. Yeah. So they trade that pick to Arizona. It's like, hey, can you make that a top four protected first? I'm pretty sure Arizona is doing that anyway. Cool. (laughs) Okay. We'll yeah, roll I it mean, over if it's in the four. I don't I, I've been saying that for years. Like, I don't understand it. I agree with you. Like, I don't know why we don't lottery protect the pick. And then, you know, we trade the Jets trade. If Rodgers doesn't play 65%, you know, it's a bad trade for the Jets, right? But you know he's going to pay 65%. But really, what are you getting if you're Green Bay? You're getting 28, 29. You're, getting a, yeah. you're not getting a first-round pick. I mean, only 11 of the 32 guys, I think, I think 11 maybe uh, picked up their fifth year option. People talk about, oh, we got to get in the first round and get a fifth year. Nobody wants the fifth year option. It's too ridiculous. Right. Next team that was too high. This one I double taked. The Falcons are eight and a half. I know. Well, what I mean, the hell? Look, they're just because they have some good, they're a fantasy team. I, Do they I, have I, lines? Do they have a quarterback? They're a seven on seven team without a quarterback. Uh, I think a lot of it is because of the division. Tampa's going to suck. You know, what's Carolina with the quarterback? I mean, did you see anything out of Ritter that you would say, oh, where? Now, look, I think Arthur Smith and they played a lot of good games, but defensively, every defensive lineman's over 30 years old. I mean, I don't know. I mean, I don't know how they're going to be able to really play that way and win. You know, last year, Mariota gave them, so they ran that six back offense, but at some point, you got to have to have the drop back pass game. I think that's way too high for Atlanta. I was in on Ritter and then I watched him. And there was, because I kind of like that Falcons team. I liked Algier. I thought they could run the ball and they had some weapons. I thought they were pretty well coached. And Ritter came in. It's like, all right, this would be fun. I'll bet, I'm going to bet on them this week. I like in a in a half. I was like, oh my God, what is this guy? Is he even a backup? Yeah, yeah I mean, he was I terrible. I don't know how they don't draft Jalen Carter. They're 50 miles from his campus. If right. they don't know that player better than anybody, they need a three technique. One of the most uh, non-talked about positions in the NFL is three technique. Everybody thinks you have a great, there are very few great three techniques. And when you have one, you're a really good defense. And Atlanta could draft them, and yet they give them to the Philly. And they take a running, I love Bijan Robinson, but they had good running backs on that team. They really did. I loved Algier. It was like, that would not have been a position I would have picked for the Falcons. All right, next team. I mean, this is really just me setting you up now. <laughs> the, this is right now, I'm like Steve Nash just driving the lane addition off. <laughs> Yeah, there's Bears? no chance Belichick's not getting over a seven. No, and no, a half we're, we're going to get that later. We're doing that. We oh. haven't gotten the too low yet. This is still the too high group. Bears, seven oh. and a half. <laughs> They're going to go eight and nine. The, well, the you Chicago got Bears. Have the MVP, Bill. They got the MVP on their team. <laughs> We've just given them the award. I mean, the guy that doesn't have Joe Montana in his top five quarterbacks is now giving out MVP awards in, in May. I love this. This is incredible. I like. I just, I shake my head when he talks because I just like, how is this possible? Well, okay, let's go through some evidence. 91 sacks, averages seven yards every time he gets sacked, 29 fumbles in two years, right? I mean, the guy's a walking turnover machine. He doesn't throw the ball. His numbers, I mean, I took shit. Davis Mills' numbers and his numbers passing are identical. The problem is Davis Mills won five games. This guy's won four. Yeah. Like, it pays to have a great PR campaign. And who says the Bears are any good on defense? And I'll add one more for you. Who says Matt Eberflus is going to be a good head coach? I, there's a lot of question marks. The thing with Fields that always made me nervous was they would fall behind and they still wouldn't throw. Yeah. 
Well, usually when you're down 20, isn't that a good time to be like, ah, they're in, they're in prevent. Let's get some completions. They wouldn't yeah. even throw then. Well, let, let me put it in perspective for you. The Indianapolis Colts and the Bears, lo, lo, their, lo, their losing total was 8.5 points per game. That's the, mm-hmm. the, the point differential. The Colts threw the ball 35 times per game. The Bears threw it 22. They didn't even want to throw when they got behind. 22? I mean, it's right there. 22, point, 22 throws a game is all they wanted to do. I mean, oh look, God. the guy doesn't throw the ball. Now, here's the we're in this Buzz Light Years part of the year. This is Buzz Light. Hey, he's light years ahead of everybody now. He's light years ahead of where he was last year. Well, he can't complete a crossing round. Like, come on. And you talk about, you know, Kevin O'Connor should look at his throwing motion. One of the things that really made a lot of people down on fields was his throwing motion, how, how it was so loose. And it wasn't going to ever be able to be corrected. The one thing with that, like he killed the Patriots. He had a couple games this year where at least for a half, you could see it. And that, I, I really like DJ Moore. And if it's there, it's got to be there this year or else you have to really, you have to really be like, all right, this is, this just is happening. Excuse. That's the, uh, we just got to get better players around him and it'll be good. And then you get better players around him and it's still not good. Like that's the, I should call that the MB philosophy. Like that's, like DJ Moore isn't going to, I mean, he's got to get the ball to him. He's got to throw it to him right? and he's got to read it. And he's got to be able to understand what he's doing and the protect you get sacked 91 times in two years. You don't understand how to protect. So bear seven and a half <laughs> under here's the last one for the two high group. The Niners are 11 and a half over under wins. And that is like the all time. I respect Kyle Shanahan over under total. Yeah. Their quarterbacks are Sam Darnold, uh, Brooke Purdy, Brock Purdy. I don't even know if he's going to be back in time. And Trey Lance, you know, who Mr. Workout. Um, <laughs> Sam Darnold, who on a platter, a playoff spot last year, big lead against Tampa. Like it's actually sitting there for Carolina to go to the playoffs and he couldn't play two halves in a row. How is yeah. Shanahan? Shanahan's had these quotes where he's like, this guy to me is like, he's a true number one pick. He's so talented. I can't wait to have him. Doesn't he watch film? I don't, you love Shanahan. I just don't get this. I mean, I think when you watch, like that game in Tampa, you know, bad interception in the red zone, they couldn't cover Mark, 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 Mike Evans in that game. Right. Uh, I thought he played better last year, but here's what I think's going on. My, my the, the one twin total, you got 11 and a half. Once the draft ended, San Francisco went to 10 and a half on in a lot of shops. So I think people oh shit. Saw well, with, I'm Fanduel right now. It's eleven and a half. That's where uh, I grabbed. I, it. There's some places out there at ten and a half. I, I mean, to me, uh, look, Trey Lance hasn't played football in four years. We saw Deshaun Watson not play football, and how long and how bad did he look? Uh, and, you know, now Kyle came out and said we have three franchise quarterbacks. I missed that memo. Like, I mean, I I, I haven't seen that one. I don't know if Brock. I think Purdy he meant. I back. think he meant they play for a franchise. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I missed that. I mean, look, they're gonna in San Francisco, he does make the game quarterback friendly. And you say, well, why wasn't Lance very good? Well, perhaps maybe Lance wasn't very good. I mean, look, they tried to trade they would love for somebody to take Lance off their head. They can't give him away. Yeah. Because nobody knows what he is. Uh, you know, t- they win with their here's the thing you worry about if you go over San Francisco. That they'd have a hard time always staying healthy for 17 games. Last year they got better at the end of the year. And, you know, and are they gonna have the quarterback? I mean, that's gonna be the issue. That seems too high. Well, going to the too low, I have five too low teams and I'll just, I'll tie the Seahawks to them. The Seahawks are eight and a half. Yeah. I thought that line was going to be at least nine and a half, maybe even 10. And the Vegas is telling me if they go nine and eight, you win the bet. I like them for the division too. For the division, they are at least on FanDuel plus 260. So I, to me, that's a toss up between those two teams because of the San Francisco quarterback thing. But am I too high in Seattle? No, I think Seattle had another really good draft, and Geno Smith's going to play as good as he did last year, maybe better. The two rookie tackles will be improved, and they got a three technique. They signed Dermonte Jones, the first three technique Pete Carroll's had since he lost Michael Bennett. I, I, I mean, look, the Rams are going to be atrocious, and I yeah. think the Rams and I think it's the Arizona, there's four wins right there. They should have four wins right there, and now all they need is five more wins over the next – I think that's a pretty good bet. Yeah, I saw the Cardinals were 24-1 to one to win the NFC West. And I was That's trying to low. think, have I ever seen a 24 to one? I think those are the worst odds I've ever seen, but it, it makes sense. Arizona is going to be, you know, horrific and probably thinking about next year right away. And they're going to have 
All Basically, right. two chances at a top five pick. Well, they're gonna they're, they could get Caleb Caleb Williams from USC. Do they take him, or do they continue to go down the road with the mayor of Munchkinland? I mean, like seriously, what do they do? Right? Like you talk <laughs> about a guy that you ruined, you you paid when you didn't have to pay him. I mean, that's going to be an interesting question. Talk about a culture guy. Yeah, well, the worst. I mean, Buda God, I'm surprised the, the Sixers didn't try to sign him to I'm come sure off they the will bench. He's a free agent. We would love to have him. I'm sure we would. You know, <laughs> can you We're shoot threes? <laughs> uh, all right, uh, four more teams, and then we're done. Uh, look, the Steelers, the over under is eight and a half, and to me, I, that's like betting against the house and blackjack. Like yeah. Tomlin's basically the house. He's just going to go nine and eight, ten, and he. Just, I don't care who's on his team. I actually like what I saw from Pickett last year. Seemed mm-hmm. like they had a pretty good draft. Um, I don't know. That seems like at least a nine-win team to me, right? They got better as the year went on, too. They really improved yeah. from the time they got blown out of Buffalo to the end of the year. I mean, they were they would have they were giving everybody some trouble. Look, the guy's a really good coach. And what I think people misconstrue is it takes three elements of your team to win: offense, defense, and the kicking game. And Tomlin's really good at that. They didn't play well at home last year. I mean, in that loss, remember the great Zach Wilson had the the 14 point fourth quarter that that was one of their losses. Kenny Pickett throws two bad interceptions in that game or else they're going to have what they have nine win though. They would have, they would have maybe competed for a playoff. So with you on Pittsburgh, I'm always going to bet on the over with Tomlin. Me too. I kind of like Pickett. Yeah. I mean, I I don't think he's bad. Well, he's never going to be a top five player, but what they no. have is they know they need the players around them. So they're going to manage him correctly. And that's half the battle with quarterbacking. Like everybody thinks no quarterback needs to be met. Ma- they all need to be managed. They all need to have the right system in place to make them most efficient. Yeah. Uh, all right. The next ones are all seven and a half, three. Panthers, seven and a half. I just think they have a lot of talent. And I don't know if Bryce will be ready next year, but he's probably the best bet of all these quarterbacks to at least be decent next year. But I bet on the Panthers second half of the year. They were really good to me until that last Tampa game. I just thought, and your son worked there last year. Yeah. I thought they had a lot of good players on both sides of the ball. They do. um, Compared to what their record was. And that I thought they underachieved. So to me, seven and a half in a bad division, that seems reasonable. Yeah, I mean, look, the DJ Moore keeps his hat on, they make the playoffs. You know, if, if yeah. the kicker makes an extra point, they make the playoffs. I mean, look, they, they're not a first pick overall in the draft team. They're good defensively. That offensive line's really good. Miles Sanders will give them another run to go with Hubbard. So I, I'm with you. And I think Bryce Young will be really good for them. He gives them, you know, part of this we don't put into it. It started this conversation. But when the quarterback's a great leader, it's the, you know, Jimmy G for San Francisco, Bryce Young will be that for Carolina. That's really important. You get that guy that's really driving the team at quarterback. That's really important. Yeah. I like some of the stories, as you know, I'm not a huge college football guy, but I like some of the stories about the the Sunday after the Saturday game. He was the first guy there yeah. in Alabama and already like thinking about like just unusual stuff for, for that. Uh, all right. Two more. The Packers seven and a half. There's, you know, I just didn't think Rodgers was that good last year. And that line is built in, oh, they're going to take such a hit at quarterback. And it's like, well, he was like a B minus last year for them. They have a lot of talent still. Why, why are the Bears and the Packers the same? That's what I keep asking everybody. The Packers are better on defense than they are. The yeah. Packers special teams improved last year with that returner that they got in there. Look, and they've got really good running backs. Their offensive line is now. They're going to be really young. I think the Packers will develop as the year goes on. I don't know what to make of Jordan Love. I think if you're betting the over there, you're saying Jordan Love's going to be decent. I, I would have a hard time making that bet with LaFleur and Jordan Love, two unknowns, because this is the first time LaFleur is actually going to have to coach a team and really lead. Can he do that? You know, he's got two 13 win seasons riding on the coattails of the MVP, or Aaron Rodgers. It's going to be interesting to see what he does, how he adapts the offense. You know, for me, I, I'm a cautiously waiting, but to me, there's no reason how they're the same as the Bears. To me, they're better on defense than the Bears alone. So for that one, I think I like the Green Bay division odds more than the over-under because, yeah, as you said, I'm basically betting on Jordan Love. And if he's right. decent, that team's talented. In the division, at least on FanDuel, they're plus 350. Well, yeah, in a division where, like, Detroit's coming out of the gate, they're in that first game, you know they're going to lose that. They're zone one. You know, at their schedule's going to be harder. They got, they were in a bunch of national games. Everybody's right. thinking of them as, like, Oh, that's the team. I didn't love their draft. I didn't love what they did. Um, 
And I just like there's some red flags with them. Every year there's the team that gets the ton of attention and it goes sideways. And I could I mean, see it happening with them. Three teams, Minnesota, New York, and Detroit. You can put Jacksonville in there too. It's going from good to great. And that's yeah. the hardest thing to do in sports is to go from good to great is to get players to understand what it takes to become great. And everybody wants to get paid. The Giants paying their guys, right? It's the Riley disease of me. Everybody wants to get paid once we made the playoffs. Now, Minnesota's dumping those guys because they got cap room, you know, but a team like Washington, if you have brought up, I don't trust Rivera, but if they, if, if Washington traded for Dalvin Cook, I'd play the over because if they had Dalvin Cook on that team with their defense, uh-huh. That would be a really smart play. You know, it's funny you mentioned Jacksonville because they were minus 160 for the division. And I couldn't decide if that was too high or too low because yeah. I can't think of a single other team I like in that division. But I also like the Jaguars being minus favorites in the division. I was like, oh, seems yeah. early. I mean, Vrabel is too good of a coach to just, I think he's got a little bit of Mike Tomlin in him. Uh, you know, Agreed. I mean, I, I think he's going to, with a year to coach this team, well, I don't trust Levis nor do I trust Tannehill, but for him, I mean, this is the most remarkable thing I've ever seen in my career in the NFL. On a Sunday night game in Kansas City, both teams coming off a bye, Malik Willis gets a first down with five minutes to go in the second quarter, and they only get one for the remainder of the game into overtime, and yet the game went into overtime. That's one of the most remarkable coaching jobs in the history of coaching. With a guy who will probably never play quarterback in the NFL he again. He should never play quarterback yeah. again. But remember, he was a top 10 pick this time last year. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, last one. The Pats are seven and a half. I'm, a- I'm actually like offended <laughs> because they went eight and nine last year and they left two wins on the table that they just gave, literally gave to the other team. They had Matt Patricia, the bane of my existence, a guy who cost you a Super Bowl ring <laughs> as the offensive coordinator. They had more dysfunction. It was the most unbelichick, sloppiest, weirdest, terrible game management season strategy. Like, oh my God, is the old man losing it kind of season. And now they have, you know, they they prior, reprioritized the coaching staff. They had a good, really good draft, I thought. Mm-hmm. They have a shitload of talent. And mm-hmm. we're talk, you were saying like, what am I getting with Jordan Love? It's like, well, Max done more than Jordan Love has. Yeah, no doubt. No they question. can't go eight and nine. Also, like, why am I afraid of the Bills yeah. at this point? Like, wh- what have the Bills done? They blew a they blew the playoffs in 13 seconds two years ago. Last year they rolled over and got their asses kicked in the playoffs. Like, why is that a juggernaut? I, I mean, look, the, the, people forget the season. Like, people forget how lucky Minnesota was to get 13 wins, or how the Giants were fortunate in the beginning of the year, and how unfortunate New England was. I mean, the punt block in Minnesota, the stupid play against the Raiders. I mean, they're in so many games that, you know, look, the, at the end of the year, the difference between tw- 12 and 5 and 5 and 12 are about 12 plays. And all those 12 plays went against New England. And so yeah. they're 8 and 9. And so I, I think the, the guy is going to coach the team, Bill O'Brien. I think that the most important thing they did this offseason is get a line coach. I mean, Patricia was also coaching the line. That line play was horrendous. People say, well, you got to get a receiver for Mac Jones. No. If you get Mac Jones a little bit of time, maybe he could throw the ball and not turn it over. Like he was getting the shit kicked out of him. And I think that'll improve. They had no receivers who could catch the ball and then run with it for more than a yard and a half, right? And the entire team. The offensive line was was really, really atypically bad for a Belichick team. Yeah, and was. the strategy stuff was horrific. But I thought they had a lot of talent. Like, I look at the defense now. If they hit with the, with the second round pick and they hit with Gonzalez, which it seems like everybody's just penciling him, he's going to play, yeah. like... They're actually kind of loaded on defense now. Plus, they fixed the kicking game. That was another thing we didn't mention. Yeah. Jake Bailey was the worst punter of all time last year. Right. Um, and they they finally got a punter, and they have a, a kicker just in case Folk finally, you know, it right. hits midnight for him. But I, I just think they're deep. I, I do, too. And I think that this Moppy, the kid they drafted from Sac State in the third round, gives them a, a box player that can tackle big guys like Josh Allen and defend the six-back attack, which they've struggled with. And then when you look at them on, you know, offensively, Stevenson is a legitimate big time running back. I mean, this guy, I mean, if he can protect the football, that's another game that we didn't even talk about. They're going to beat Cincinnati. And he right. fumbles the ball going in the, I mean, we got the ball inside the five yard line and he fumbles it and loses that game. So it was very uncharacteristic. I, I can't see that happen in two years in a row. 
Yeah, I don't either. And I, I you know, they're plus 750 for the division, which I also think seemed a little crazy because it goes back to the Bills thing. I I just feel like the Bills get a pretty big benefit of the doubt at this point. And yeah, they should they be the favorites. But then I look at Miami. It's like, I don't know how many more games two is going to play. at three concussions last year. Yeah. Then I look at the Jets. Um, I don't know when Brees Hall is coming back. Well, I don't know about, I don't know about the coach. We haven't seen him actually like coaching coach. a real playoff team. I have no idea what's going to happen with Rodgers. I didn't like how he looked last year. So there's a scenario where they're really good, but there's also a scenario where it's disappointing and it feels like the Mets season right now where all the Mets fans are like, what happened? I thought we were going to be awesome. Yeah. I mean, look, the, the, the offensive line is still an issue. I mean, Miami just signed Isaiah Wynn. I mean, if you think, if you, if you're worried about concussion protocol, I'm not sure you want to sign Isaiah Wynn. You know, for point. your left tackle. So the Miami has severe offensive line issues that they've got to fix or else two is going to get hit again. And that's going to be problematic. But look, it's wide open. I think every, when has there ever been a time where on paper, it goes the way it thinks on paper? Never, never. does. Well, the it one thing does. that we know for sure is that the NFC is not talented enough, which means yeah. at least from like an over under division type of thing, that's where the real inefficiencies are going to be, right? That's NFC right. South, something weird happened in NFC North, maybe Seattle right now. To me, Seattle looks like what Philly was like last year, where it started out, Dallas was the favorites and Philly was like plus 200. And then Philly started creeping toward them. And by the time, what did we hit August? Philly was the favorites in the division. Yeah. People started looking at their schedule. Like, wait a second, if they get past week two, it's like smooth sailing after that. Yeah. Um so I I I'm I have my eye on Seattle as like maybe still some value there. I said this on my show and pot. I would bet overs in the NFC, unders in the AFC. Oh, good man. Who's your favorite quarterback right now? Still Mahomes? Yeah, I mean it's hard to argue with them. I mean, Burrow to me has that it factor, you know, yeah. that ability to win. You know, we, this is one of the key things that I think Bryce Young has too, is that ability to play with instincts an awareness around you, the bird factor, the magic, the great players have that. And when you sit down and talk to them about a game, they can remember the game like it was yesterday. I mean, I, I told this story, Bill Russell's wife bought him a, a video of him in the 56 NC2A game against LaSalle. And he sat down at 86 years old and he watched it and he knew every play. He knew every player, knew every play. He thought, well, he was 21. The great players have that instinct and to me, Burroughs got that. I, I have a hard time doubting them. And I think Amaromo is a really good defensive coordinator. And if they yeah. would run the ball more and get a little bit, let help him out and take some pressure off, I think it would really. People say, well, you can't run the ball. I agree. But you have to pace the game. You got to pace the game a little bit. Because when the, when the quarterback's got to throw it 50 times, something bad is going to happen. So you would have Mahomes and Burrow. Who else is in that top, top tier for you before we go? Is it, I mean, is it look, a list love, of like six or two? I love Herbert, but I can't put, you know, I mean, Staley is, you know, for me, it's just so hard. I think Jalen Hurts in the six back offense is really hard to defend. You know, it never has to throw drop back passes, right? He never has to do that because they play from in front. I mean, they had a plus 175 first half point differential last year. You know, I love Herbert's talent, you know, but to me, there's something missing about that team. It's to me, it's that toughness factor with with, San, with the Chargers. They can't stop the run, you know, and I think that that's problematic. But, to, you know, and look, without Brady and Rodgers, I mean, you know, Jared Goff is actually one of the top quarterbacks in the NFC. I know. It's hilarious. I thought Peyton was going to wait for that Chargers job. Because I, I, I just couldn't imagine that Staley was going to be more than another year. But he, he obviously just wanted to coach again. He loved it. Den Denver threw a shitload of money at him. Well, I think D'Amico turning that job down because he wasn't going to get that job if D'Amico took it. And he took Houston instead. And so I think he realized, you know, I better take this now because if I wait, it may, maybe something doesn't happen. I think coaches yeah. get a little worried about that. They better take one if not. 